Let's take a look at command line concepts. Standard input, standard output, and standard error streams. The use of pipes and of redirection operators are both important concepts when operating at the command line. But before discussing those concepts, it's first important to gain a clear understanding of standard input, standard output, and standard error. What do we mean by standard input, standard output, and standard error? Recall that nearly every program, as well as many other concepts that we will encounter, are documented using man pages. Let's see if there's a man page for standard input. Hmm, that didn't work. It looks like bash split our string standard input into separate words. And man tried to look up the documentation for the term standard and separately tried to look up the documentation for the term input. Recall that we can force bash to treat a string as a single token by enclosing the string within quotation marks. Okay, well, that's a bit better. This time, man tried to look up the documentation for the term standard input. Before we give up in our search for documentation, we should try a broader search. If we were searching online, we could use Google or some other search engine. But the man pages are local to this machine. It turns out that we have access to a local search engine capable of searching through man pages. Each man page has a short description available within it. By calling apropos and providing a keyword, apropos will search these descriptions for instances of keyword. Let's use apropos to search for the phrase standard input. There we go. It looks like STDIO has a man page that looks promising. Let's look there. This man page looks a little different than the other man pages we've seen. It looks like STDIO defines a programming API within the context of the Linux Programmer's Manual. Let's look through this man page for the term standard input. Here we go. At program startup, three text streams are predefined. Standard input, 
for reading conventional input, standard output for writing conventional output, that's a typo in the man page, and standard error for writing diagnostic output. These streams are abbreviated STD in, STD out, and STD air. If we continue scrolling through the remainder of this man page, we find a lot more programming API information, but not really anything more about standard input and output. But wait, at the end of most man pages is a see also section. It looks like there is a man page for standard out, but its title is the abbreviation STD out rather than the full spelled out name. Excellent. This man page tells us some of the same information we saw in the man page for STDIO. Every Unix program has three streams, one for input, one for output, and one for printing diagnostic or error messages. Aha, but this is new. These are typically attached to the user's terminal. What does this mean? It means that when a program wants to obtain input from the user, by default, it will attempt to read that input from the user's terminal. For example, by reading input that the user types into the terminal. When a program wants to display output or error messages to the user, by default, it will print those messages to the user's terminal. This can be visualized like so. We can visualize each process as a box. Here we have the echo process. Connected to the echo process is an incoming data stream titled STDN for standard input. There are also two outgoing data streams connected to the echo process. One is titled STD out for standard output, and the other is titled STD air for standard error. Let's observe how each of these three streams is connected by default to the terminal. Echo can be used to display a line of text. But where does that text go? Echo writes the text to standard output. Recall that standard output is an outgoing data stream. Echo wrote the string hello world to the outgoing data stream std out. By default, standard output is connected to the user's terminal. That's the case here. And that is why we observe 
that the message, hello world, has been printed to our terminal. What about standard input and standard error? Not every program makes use of all three streams. Echo prints the standard output, but doesn't use standard input. Let's look at a program that uses both standard input and standard output. TR reads from standard input, transforms the input, and writes the result to standard output. Let's tell TR to transform lowercase letters to uppercase letters. What just happened? Well, TR is waiting for input to arrive via standard input. Recall that by default, the standard input stream is connected to the terminal. Let's type something and see what happens. When I hit enter, TR reads the data streaming in on standard in processes it, and then prints the result to the standard output stream. TR again reads the next line. processed it, and printed the output to the standard output stream, which we again observe at the terminal. I can hit Control D to tell TR that I have no more input for it. So now we've observed standard input, and standard output. What about standard error? If a program encounters an error, it should print the accompanying error message to standard error. Let's use TR again to see an example of standard error. TR has a mandatory argument. Let's try calling TR without providing this required information. When we failed to provide a required argument, TR responded by printing an error message on the standard error stream. Because the standard error stream is, by default, connected to the terminal, we see that error message printed here. The concepts of standard input, standard output, and standard error streams are critical concepts. These concepts are extremely important. Nearly every program you will ever run at the command line will make use of one or more of these three streams.
and discussions of more advanced topics, including pipelines and redirection, will assume that you understand standard input, standard output, and standard error. This work was created by Lane Schwartz. You are free to reproduce and adapt this work under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License.